Hi everyone, welcome. I'm over here at my computer and we're checking out my tracking spreadsheet before heading down to the wormery to get to work on our tasks at hand. My tasks at hand are to check in on my um, systems that I've been now sitting on what I refer to as a warming rack. These over here have been on the warming rack for a certain period of time. This one rested on the warming rack for 15 days up until our last check-in on these, which was 10 days ago. At that time, I did take one of the systems and kind of call it quits after 84 days. Um, but on my warming rack, there's these three other systems that, we, um, that we've got slated for check-in today. I guess the only reason I put a to-do next to this one that's not even on the warming rack or even functioning as a cocoon nursery anymore is because um, last time it was just sort of determined that it would be coming to a close, but at this time it's official. The, the contents have been emptied out. The bin has been washed off. So um, I only put a mark there to indicate that I would want to make mention of that to officially, you know, take it off the books as being tracked anymore. So it's these here, this 68-day-old cocoon nursery, now on the rack for 25 days. Another one on the rack for 25 days is this 48-day-old cocoon nursery. These sat around as cocoon nurseries for a while till I built this warming rack. Um, and then last but not least, this third one over here, which is... Um, a 23 day old bin which got onto the rack only two days after it um, started into being a cocoon nursery so you can see that the cocoon nurseries if you can once again see the pattern on the background I don't know if I'm getting too close with the camera now but the cocoon nurseries always launch on the same day as the new bin that the worms that created those cocoons get launched off into so the newest one are these three buckets that I'm running European night crawlers in the um, the other two have been on the rack a little bit longer also night crawlers here in the other case it's the uh, mixed population of worms there was a little bit of bait food placed on the top of each container to try to lure any worms that might be coming out of the cocoons and hatching and at this point you know maybe 23 days as a cocoon nursery in the case of the youngest one might require a little bit more time maybe there's a, still a cocoon or two in there that needs to hatch but I would think that the other two more mature ones have had plenty of time for the last of the cocoons to hatch out. At this point, it's really just letting the baby worms grow to a mature enough size that they can be rounded up and relocated. So we're going to be checking in on these systems. I just figured we'd really quickly look through the document here to um, put things in perspective, and then, uh, then we'll head on downstairs. So let's get to work. So now before we get into the, uh, the bins themselves, the warming rack is nothing more than a, just a couple pieces of wood placed up on edge just to have a couple of bricks to keep those um, precariously placed pieces of wood from toppling over sending all these trays of finished castings down onto the floor more recently I started covering up with cardboard thinking that if there is a little bit of warmth um, generated within the containers then let's not let it escape and try to keep it down in there so here's the uh, here's the last tray that we had been previously monitoring and abandoned the last time we checked in here. Its position was out on top, getting some warmth from the uh, gap between a couple containers. At this point, we're down to three, and at some point in the near future, I might actually be looking to get another bin on here, a bin that's almost done getting evacuated through horizontal migration and in that I think that we might be able to round up some babies once the cocoons in there hatch so I'm gonna be looking to vacate this thing at some point soon and it might be the oldest of them that we might be able to um, bring to an end at some point soon so let's uh let's get this camera up onto its tripod I'll slip on a glove and we'll get to work checking in on these things. See how our little baiting stations are doing rounding up baby worms. Now in each of the three containers that we're going to be checking in on today, the objective is the same. Number one is going to be to collect any baby worms that have come together in the baiting station that we created. If there's any moisture needed, I'm prepared to apply some using my pump sprayer. And I don't know if we're going to find many leftovers. But even if we do, I think the game plan was just to reinforce the baiting area in each case, in each of the containers, so that the process can continue. 
obviously there's always that chance that in the oldest of the containers, the um, the 68 day old one with the mixed worm population in it, there's always that chance that we might determine that there's really no need to continue and we can call it a done deal. But right now I'm just assuming we're going to continue on that one and um, let the process continue. So that's going to require moisture, bait, and time. So let me get the first bin over here and we'll see how things are progressing. So the first container we're starting with here is the oldest of the um, three. It's the mixed population. Castings from the mixed population that now lives in my vermi bag tote. And my plan was that whatever worms we're able to collect in this process from all three of these containers today are just going to get placed into the into the vermi bag tote where the mixed population of worms lives because that mix is supposedly um, partially European night crawlers anyway. And I think that the mixed population is generally a little bit uh, shy on, on ENCs anyhow, so throwing a few more in there might be a nice thing. So while this is the cocoon nursery from the mixed container, and we can potentially run into red wigglers here, Indian blue worms, or European night crawlers. The other two that we're going to check are theoretically only ENCs. Although, you know, things in my wormery are not so tightly controlled. <laughs> and I've got shelves that, you know, are easy for worms to just drop through should they crawl out of a an upper bin they could easily land in a lower bin so it's interesting we've even got a little sprout growing here we'll just send that over there with the the worms we've collected i'm not attempting to quantify this collection here it probably is realistic to say we've at least got a maybe a dozen or so maybe more in here I think that these little chunks of banana are part of the bait that we laid out for them last time. It does seem like they're doing a number on this stuff because I can sort of recognize it as a banana peel, but when I try to pick it up, it just breaks in half. So there's not a lot of recyclable food stuff available in here. Now, one thing we've been doing lately when we, when we check these is add moisture. There's a little guy, and just from the color, I would probably say it's a blue worm. Oh, now we've got a couple more. So, the past few times we, or at least I know the last time we did not add moisture. We just didn't feel the need to, and I'm already getting the sense from the, the dampness of this stuff here that we don't need to once again. The plastic covering is pretty thorough, and it's doing a good job protecting the moisture from evaporating, keeping it down here within the system. And even though it's just a modest amount of moisture that the foods that we add contribute, I'm sure that they also um, release a little bit of moisture in the process of breaking down and thawing out. Because you might have noticed that banana peel that we're going to be putting in here is uh, frozen. Not the whole banana peel, we'll just break off a third of it and place it in here to continue this process and you know even before this thing got onto the rack 25 days ago it was already functioning as a cocoon nursery 43 days prior so 68 days it really kind of makes you wonder is it necessary to continue the process like this if you've managed to collect up everything that appears to be around the feeding area or is there still the potential for more I mean it does seem like the surface where all the moisture is recirculating would be a, a key place for the worms to show up to take advantage of that collecting moisture the food being there is just another thing to hopefully keep them there until we can scoop them out I'm still finding a worm or two here or there I'm not in any real rush to bring a close to this system so if it's going to require time I'm all about that and let it keep going At this point if there are any worms remaining remaining in here they're probably really really small and just sort of made their way out of their cocoons possibly maybe if there were cocoons that were really relying heavily on the warmth to be able to hatch then you know 25 days ago when that warmth was finally applied maybe um Maybe we've got a few hatchlings that just 
very recently made their way out of their cocoons and need a little bit more time to sort of get the wherewithal and the size to be able to make their way up to the surface and take advantage of the moisture and take advantage of the food. So I'm going to let this continue as is. I don't feel the need to apply any further moisture. I wouldn't want the stuff to get all nasty. And I guess from that point of view, even the, the stuff being a little bit dry out here on this outer edge might be um, additional motivation to get the worms to further move inward, hopefully move upwards, and come to the place where we can round them all up. But I've got a feeling by the time we get back in here next time, whenever that may be, we're probably not going to find many worms, but we probably will find a couple. Because it seems unlikely that we would have, you know, succeeded in getting every last one of them out of here. But since, you know, like I said, I'm in no hurry, allowing this to continue will um, probably yield a couple more volunteers, but uh, at this point I would assume we don't have a whole lot left to go as far as rounding worms up out of this system. So I'm just going to take a piece of this banana. Perhaps this is the bin that we need the least amount in because there's probably the least amount of worms to be rounded up out of here. And the youngest of the bins, the 24, is it 23? Yeah, the 23 day old cocoon nursery. It was only 23 days ago that we pulled the adults out of there. So, you know, I guess there's still that possibility that a few of the cocoons that those adults left behind are still not yet hatched. But let's make our way over to those other containers and see what we've got. My only other thought was that maybe there was a worm or two still camped out on this plastic that we could have taken along with the others, but if that's the case, we'll just have to be sure that we uh, get them next time. But since this is continuing, it's not an urgent matter, so we'll just leave it the way uh, we found it for the most part. Freshly set up with bait, not needing any additional moisture. But as far as extra time is concerned, I believe whenever the next check-in is, I believe that's probably going to be my target for bringing this system to a close. So let's get the next one out here. Alright, so now this is the first of the two European Nightcrawler Cocoon Nurseries. This is the one that's been out here on the um, warming rack for 25 days. And 23 days prior to that, it was already um, set up as a cocoon nursery. And I had even thought about maybe combining this one with the younger one. But I figured, you know what, if this one is actually, you know, a cocoon nursery for the past uh, 48 days now, then maybe it's near the end and it would be a shame to hamper its completion by mixing in a bunch of younger castings and needing to give the whole thing at that point additional time allowing for the process to you know finish up in the younger material or the more newly collected material so I've got some some bubbles in this bubble wrap that um, are punctured so the worms actually for whatever reason enjoy getting down into the bubbles <laughs> this is like their own little private clubhouse so they'll crawl in there and then getting them out is a pain I mean we are gonna let this process continue here too so I don't have to go bananas picking out these worms, but I thought I saw one that would have been easy pickings right there. Not inside of a bubble, just in between the bubbles. Whoops. But let's um let's get to where the greater number of worms would be expected to be found, which is where we baited. And it's interesting because there's almost like a little depression here. Uh, it's not, I'm not sure if it's visible from the camera, but the um, the material does seem sunken down right over here where the where the food was placed. And I'm seeing a super, super dark cocoon right out here on the tip of my index finger. Usually the darkness of a cocoon indicates how close it is to being hatched. And if it's very dark, that means it's uh, almost there. When they're originally placed into the material by the worm, the, um, the color of it is fairly light. And you know, since we removed all of the uh, worms from this system 48 days ago presumably all of them there probably hasn't been a whole lot of mating going on over here or the creation of any new cocoons so if we bump into any cocoons 
chances are it's already hatched. Maybe there's still that odd chance that there's a little bit more time needed. But if we do find any cocoons that have not yet hatched, they would have to be pretty dark in color. So I just found a few worms that were mainly attracted to the moisture collecting on the paper. And I guess as I removed the paper, I sort of dislodged them. Sent them rolling off. So those are the ones I collected really quick over here. And I guess we've sort of given any other worms that were possibly up where the food was a chance to, to bug out. So maybe we'll just do a sort of slow, gradual excavation of the material and just pick off anybody we can along the way. I guess over here in the feeding area would be the place to expect the greatest number. And I'm not too worried about bringing some castings along for the ride. I'd really like to see if I could just get the majority of the worms out of here. And then the castings can go into storage. But until that time that I feel like I've got all the babies out of here, I'm okay with just letting the process continue. This is kind of fun because it's new to me, you know. I mean, if it's something I've been doing forever, it would be maybe kind of routine or even boring because you don't see a lot of worms. But maybe I guess the fun part is trying to spot them, you know. You know they're in here, and you know they're small, so it does take a little bit of probing around to spot them. The material feels good, you know, as my as I run my fingers through it, I can feel that it's just got a nice, you know, warmth to it. And it's not hot or anything, but as I make my way down, all the way at the bottom at this point, that's where I feel the greatest amount of warmth. That's one thing we did not do in the other containers. We didn't try to probe all the way down to the bottom where it's the most warm. I wonder if we might have missed some worms as a result of not being quite thorough here too we've got one pretty low down but uh, like I said we're gonna be letting this continue and we'll be checking in again in the future at some point I guess we'll have an opportunity to go really thorough through all of the material to make sure we didn't leave anyone behind but I think on these um, these check-ins and haul outs we could probably um, just you know ooh, stick to the worms that have made their way over to where the the feeding area was so I don't think we need to add moisture in this case either the material all, all feels really good then again I often question my ability to properly judge the dampness of a worm bin perhaps it wouldn't hurt to add a little bit of moisture perhaps that's the reason I'm finding some that are pretty down low pretty far down low <laughs> Maybe it's just the uh, little bit of extra moisture that's down there that they're attracted to. But you know what, I, I want to try to uh, apply a pretty consistent um, series of steps in each case. You know, applying about the same amount of food. And in this case, I think we're probably going to stick to the assumption that we're okay from the moisture level. Yeah, I think we are. It could certainly be more damp, but I've got other places too where things are so damp that um, they're just muddy. And here it feels really nice, good moisture level, yet very crumbly still. That's really what you want, I think. I, want, I think you want that kind of middle ground of stuff being damp enough to be very comfortable for the worms, but still nice and loose and crumbly. So here we've collected a, a fair number of babies maybe even more from down low from within the material than we um, we found around the food but then again all we found where we left the food was a, a ditch <laughs> no leftovers of the food so maybe uh, maybe these baby worms are kind of living up to their reputation of being voracious eaters and maybe they just did away with that food that was there because yeah now that I think about it I don't recall seeing any leftovers so maybe it's um maybe it's a good idea to come back here sooner than 10 days maybe 10 days is enough time for them to wipe out what food was there to bait them out of the material and then they just go about their merry way because the food's been depleted maybe i gotta get back in here while there's still remaining bait for the um for the worms to continue to hang out with
or on or in or around. All right, so all we've got left here is, um, you know, omitting the application of moisture because I don't think it's necessary. We are adding a little bit of moisture with this delectable piece of banana peel. And I guess we had a pretty tattered piece of top covering paper, but I'm going to see what I could do about just using it as is, even though it feels like it's just going to shred on its own, just under its own weight. It's not really serving much of a purpose. It's perhaps a modest little barrier to prevent excess evaporation in those places where the plastic doesn't really reach. So I think by put, sort of putting it right here, it can continue to serve that little purpose. And I think it looks to me like this was perhaps this way, allowing for the edges to dry out a little bit. I'm wondering if by reorienting it to give it a little bit more width to go edge to edge, perhaps we benefit a little bit by sort of uh, not having as much coverage down at the bottom, but having much more thorough coverage around the top. So this continues now, 48 days as a cocoon nursery, but it probably doesn't need a whole lot more time. Well, let's get this little guy out of here too before we put the system back up on the heating rack and, and then I can go get the last system where we're going to do the final extraction. Okay, now this one is also European night crawlers like the last one that we just did. And yeah, those those little guys were small, right? These setups are all very similar, slight variations on a theme. I guess here the newspapers on top. If it were below, it would probably be getting a lot more attention and getting beaten up by the worms, eaten up and beaten up. But even without that piece of newspaper, there's other pieces of paper here for the worms to nibble on cardboard actually so I took this little guy off the bubble wrap we got a couple that are just basking out here on the top surface these little guys don't look like they were just freshly hatched this little guy here has got the clitellum on it so does this one so these were the ones that just sort of evaded me when I did the collection and relocation of the worms and uh, I didn't really, you know, go bananas trying to make sure that I've evacuated the castings completely. So I did go into this with the expectation that some of the newer bins where I've been trying to kind of compress the timelines and overlap some of the phases, um, I sort of left some of these stragglers in here with the knowledge that I'd be back and can collect them up the next go around. So we don't have to go too nuts finding every last one. At some point all this cardboard will be um, relocated with the last haul out of worms. And I'm just curious to see if there's any more between the corrugation layers. I guess it makes good sense just to pick off any ones I can see along the way. Curious to see if there's any leftover food here. A lot of times the distinguishing factor about the night crawlers is that they really enjoy the carbon rich um, food items you give them like these pieces of paper. Kind of makes you wonder if they'll just ignore the yummy kitchen scraps or pieces of fruit or veggie that you left for them and they'll just go for the cardboard. I don't know. So we'll see if we spot any leftovers. But even if we do they're going to get that last chunk of banana peel that I've got set aside for them because the process will definitely continue here after only 24 days there might still be the chance that there's a few more <laughs> cocoons in here that need more time to hatch or at least I would assume that that's the case you know what I'm wondering if we might be able to just do a sort of a wholesale grab out of here and put it in here with the assumption that there are a good number of worms then we can gradually pick out the things that we might be able to reuse like this chunk of a banana peel you can see there's a little worm right in there inside the stem but we're not going to work that hard to try to get them all you can see there's signs of some cantaloupe being fed here last time too so that must have been a 
really tempting feeding for them to come up for. And it does seem like other than that little bit of hard rind of the cantaloupe, they've nipped off all of the fruit from it. So while there's a few worms still remaining here in these chunks of paper and bedding that were surrounding the food items, I don't think we're seeing a whole lot of leftovers. Yeah, banana peels will generally take more than just 10 days to break down. So to see them in here is realistic. Even this stuff off the cantaloupe is the tough portion of the rind, but if you can see really closely, they've picked off all the soft stuff in between those interesting patterns. So even though that stuff is more or less toast at this point, I've picked it out. Maybe we can just put it back into the feeding area. And we got a few worms that we've collected up here. Just thinking maybe we can excavate through a couple of these little chunks to see if we can spot how many we bought out of here. I guess before we give them too much of a chance to dive down and escape collection, let's probe a little bit further than the depth, the depth that we excavated here and see what else we see. I guess, like last time, maybe there is a good amount of moisture still held down within this material. Um, and maybe even leftover foods for that matter. Which means that there's really no reason for the worms to come up in pursuit of the food that was put out there to bait them. Perhaps the conditions down low are super comfortable. They've got no reason to make their way up. So as I probe down low, I can see a few worms hanging out in the material, but not too many. I would say that we definitely saw more up at the top near where the food had been placed for them. And that's exactly what we want. I thought I just saw a couple really tiny ones so small that I just sort of brushed them aside and didn't even notice them. Because I guess my, my eyes are trained for somewhat larger worms typically, but I gotta remind myself that it's the little guys that we're kind of targeting here, right? And a lot of times I'll let this process continue just for the sake of letting them grow big enough so that I don't just gloss past them and miss them. So even though we've got probably enough time elapsed here for the majority of the cocoons that were in here to have hatched, I, I think there's still value in um, prolonging the time a little bit so that the so that the little tiny worms tucked away somewhere down within the material can sort of get big enough that they'll begin, you know, leaving the space where they were hatched and exploring the bin and hopefully getting attracted to where we want them to be. But it's these little guys that are so cool to see because that's exactly why we're doing this you know but yeah we're not gonna go for some sort of a high degree of um, completeness here in terms of getting every last one out I'm just really more doing this out of a sense of curiousness but it does almost seem to me like the majority of the worms were surrounding the bait that we laid out for them so to continue with a, a fresh little portion of bait let the process continue I think is going to be a great way to um, collect up the rest of the worms that still live in here or the ones that are still yet to be born all right very very nice here and there I'm bringing up this drier material that was down low I still think even though we're incorporating a little bit of dry stuff to the top I still think the moisture level in this material is fine in fact maybe even you know, maybe even too damp if my goal is to get the worms to not want to be in it anymore. <laughs> it's always kind of like a, it's a, I don't know, is it a proper expression to consider it as a catch-22? Because, number one, you're trying to dry this stuff, let the material dry to the point where the worms feel like they've got to get out. Um, but even prior to that, you need worms to repel from the dryness so you want to initially begin with a good amount of moisture so as to make sure that the worms hatch but then when you want to round them up and get them to clear out of the material that they're inhabiting the drying seems to be a, an effective way to achieve that so that's the balance that I think um, and the trick to <laughs> to being able to manage the different processes and the goals that each process has 
So what do we got here? This must have been just some of the, I had a little bit of bedding type materials surrounding the foods, thinking that maybe they'll crawl into that. So I'll just throw that back down in there where the food is. And then, um, and then I think that these extra layers of paper and cardboard out on top are not only stuff that the worms kind of enjoy hanging out on, hanging it around in, but it's also a carbon food source. So they can, uh, they can use it for that too if they should feel the need to. So the process continues. But for how long? That's the real question, I guess, at this point. I feel like, you know, maybe not in the case of this bin, with it only being in this process for the past 23 days, but in the case of the oldest one, that's 68 days, and even in the one that I showed you earlier, the one that we ended last time, which ran for 84 days, you know, am I just going overboard? Am I running it for way too long? Perhaps. It does seem like if I had optimized the conditions earlier by providing the level of warmth needed, to let cocoons be successful, then maybe I wouldn't have to wait so long. So this bin luckily has actually had that benefit of being on the warming rack almost the entire time that it was um, serving cocoon hatchery functions. So maybe here we'll have the least amount of lost time due to cold. So I guess we'll have to see. Maybe this one will be able to wrap up its process in a, in a fraction of the time as the other ones that didn't benefit from being on the warming rack rack right from the get-go but without knowing the finish or the outcome you're always left with that little sense of excitement about what's going to happen next <laughs> all right everyone i guess before we call it a day we should get these little guys situated in their new home what do you think let's get going and then we'll be done okay so now the box that the vermi bag tote rests within is a slightly larger container than the other containers that we had out here. So hopefully we're not getting crowded out of a good view here. We're going to just drop these little guys in and we'll be done. So there's not a whole lot to be done in this container. I think it was just a couple days ago that we were in here to feed. So otherwise we wouldn't really be back in here. There's a little guy on the cardboard is another. No, that's just the stem of a leaf. All the rest of this stuff looks like probably castings left behind recently by the inhabitants of the bin. So we'll put these coverings back on at the end after we've released our wormies. Let's get them situated. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> did we get them all? Yeah, looks like we did. So I'm just going to spread this out a little bit. Maybe we'll get a little better sense of how many we managed to round up on this go around. I don't know. It's hard to say. What do you think? Let me know what you think, and um, after we give these guys a minute to get situated, we could pack up and call it a day. Well, there's not much left here. The camera did actually evidently run out because I ran over to the uh, sink to rinse out that tray that the worms were brought over in here with and when I got back the camera was indicating that it had stopped already due to the storage being maxed out so I made a little bit more room just to film this wind up and sign off so that was fun I don't know I think we managed to get a couple dozen worms rounded up and released into this system and a lot of people might consider that that is a huge um, waste of effort and time for such a small, uh, I don't know, payoff, if you will. But I'm not too worried about it. To me, it does seem like a little bit of a shame to put cocoons out into the garden and lose that opportunity to keep those baby worms that come out of the cocoons in my wormery. But other people might just see that as a benefit, and you know, everyone's correct in that case. It's really where you see the value and I see the value in both um, scenarios. So to me, it can go either way. I guess sometimes I just do this stuff out of a, a sense of curiosity to see what kind of results I get if I try. So I wonder, how many other people go through this effort? Is it just me? <laughs> no, I think it's a pretty common practice. So hopefully you're doing it too. 
Um, but if you haven't tried it, give it a go. It's not that tough. It's pretty cool. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a quick thumbs up before you leave. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.